crime family spooky season is here and all of the beautiful beautiful spooktacular sets that come along with it if you are new here please subscribe like and comment on this video my name is sierra i am so happy to have you so listen i did a thing right no i didn't do murder did not do murder it wasn't me this time but i did join a collab and that doesn't change anything for this series that we have going on for the month of October, the Spooky Set series. It actually ties perfectly in with the collab because the collab is the Halloween Spotlight collab challenge. And it's what me and a couple other ladies are doing. We all chose four different themes for the four Saturdays of October. And we're all going to post every Saturday through October to those specific themes that we chose for the Saturdays. And we're going to take the time out to spotlight each other one or two at a time. So like today, I'm going to introduce you guys to two lovely ladies, but it's only going to take up a small portion of this video, a minute portion. So the rest of the video is still exactly the same. You just get introduced to somebody new. And I'm leaving all the links to all these lovely ladies down in the description box so you can go and see and follow them throughout this collab and see what they do for each of the themes. But in this video, I will only be spotlighting two of the lovely ladies, and then next Saturday, I will spotlight two different lovely ladies, if that makes sense. So let's get to this set. So you guys, how I came up with today's set was, for the challenge, the theme was graveyard, and Barbie and Suzanne chose this theme. And I just, in my head, I was like, I have to do Pet Cemetery. I have to. But I have to use those hinges that I said I was going to use, those tiny little hinges. So I made Church, a tombstone, Church the Cat from Pet Cemetery. Do you remember him? The dead cat that comes back to life? Yeah. He's got his own tombstone, and it's like a little Easter egg. If you flip it open, there he is, a dead little kitty. <laughs> so the idea was like, okay, we can't just do Pet Cemetery. Courage the Cowardly Dog just has to be in there. Don't ask me why or what possessed me to have to do this. But it just fit so well. And I am so glad I did this because this really pushed my boundaries. And that tombstone almost broke me. You guys are going to see it. But let's get into how we created it. So the nails are already prepped and the tips are applied because I'm trying out a peel off base coat that I found on Amazon. I'm gonna keep my opinions to myself until I try it a couple times, a di couple different ways. So we're just gonna go straight into the acrylic application. This is the foundation for our nail art. That's the only reason I am showing it to you. You will not see this in the finished result because I'm doing all gel nail art. So I just want to show you two of the fingers for application. We're just going in with one in the pink from our True Nudes collection. And yeah, I'm going to show you two fingers real quickly. And then we're going to go straight into the nail art because that is what this challenge is about, is about nail art. So listen, I want to jump into these creepy, scary pet facts, right? So, and these are going to like lead one into another, like one is going to lead up to the next and then, then that it will lead into the next because they all seem to have something to do with one another. So scientists did a study on cats versus dogs of how much they love their owners, right? How much love does your pet have for you if you have a cat versus a dog? So the chemicals that get released in the brain when you're feeling love are the same chemicals that get released in your pet's brain endorphins and stuff, right? So they did the study testing the levels of these chemicals getting released in cats versus dogs' brains. And what happened, what they seemed to notice was that dogs, the chemicals in their brains are five times higher when they see their human than cats. Cats' levels barely change from them sitting there licking their butt to looking up and seeing their human the levels barely fluctuate. But when a dog is licking its butt and then looks up to see the human, the levels go five times higher. Your dog loves you. Your cat <laughs> couldn't care less, right? So that fact goes into this next one. If you was to die in your home with your animal, if you have a dog your dog is going to eat out of its food bowl. It's going to mourn you. It's going to wait a couple days before it might start nibbling on some fingers and toes, right? 
But if you are left in that home for like a month with that starving dog, there isn't going to be much left of you. There might be a skull. There might be a pelvic bone. We'll see. But if you die in your home, your cat is not waiting. It's going straight for the soft spots. Eyes gone. Cheeks out of here. Your cat is not waiting and it's going to still have food in his food bowl. Cats don't care. They just give no fucks. They don't care. They're going to eat you. Like I said, they could care less. Now, the next piece of information is the fact that dogs, when I googled it, it's crazy. You can't believe everything you read on the internet because if you believe it, then ghosts are a fact, right? Dogs can sense supernatural beings like ghosts and demons. Swear to God, Google it, and it's going to tell you that this is true. Now, I don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in demons. But dogs do sense something the other that humans cannot sense. If you have seizures, epileptic seizures, grand mal seizures, if you are prone to strokes, you can get dogs that actually can sense these coming on and they will alert you and you can know to lay down so that if you go into a seizure you're not standing up and could potentially fall and hit your head and hurt yourself worse than what you already are hurting having this seizure right dogs can sense oncoming seizures and dogs can sense oncoming strokes they can sense certain forms of cancer Dogs are miraculous. They truly can do like out of this world things. I'm not sure how they they can find drugs too. In airports, be careful. (laughs) But it's true. Dogs really can do really cool things. So here is our finished application. And then here is the finished filing. This is what they look like filed. I go in with Beetle's base gel because I wanted to get rid of it off of my shelf and It's crazy what you see here next. I base gel my nails before I go in with gel nail art because I want everything to be nice and smooth. Any little lumps, I want everything filled in. If there's any little cracks or craters, look at how yellow those nails were. Now look at my paper towel. I go to wipe it off. My paper towel starts turning yellow from this Beatles base gel. That's crazy. That's gross. Like if... What if people don't know that? Like, I don't know. You guys check your Beatles beige doll and tell me if you guys get like a yellow inhibition layer, if it changes the color of your nails. So I go in with black gel paint and then I realize that I don't want black nails. I wanted pink and purple nails. So I had already cured and I actually had to go in and file them again, file all the black gel off and go in and look at my inspo pics. So here's my inspo pics. I wanted stuff to look at, even though I didn't plan this set out. It's more of a freestyle. I wanted things that I could get inspo from. So we're going to go in and we're going to sketch out courage. And I do not cure during this simple little sketch because what I'm doing is I am proportioning him. I'm going to draw the belly, then I'm going to draw the head, and I'm going to make sure those kind of match up with the picture I'm looking at, and I want to make sure that it all fits on the nail before I cure. I don't want to go in and draw like the belly and the legs, cure that, especially after I already painted them black and had to file that all off. So I want to make sure that um, if I was to go in and do the belly and the legs and then cure that and then go in to do the head and the nose and all of a sudden like it's not fitting or it's not looking right, right? I want to, I'm leaving it all uncured until I finish just a simple outline of him. And you can see here, I keep going in and erasing. I did not have this much trouble with the scare bear. I literally did that scare bear all in one setting without erasing anything. And courage, no. So once we get done with this simple sketch of courage, and I'm not doing fine details right now, I am just getting the main parts there and then curing. I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the graveyard scene. I'm going to get the trees in there. I'm going to get the bats. I'm going to get the tombstones. I'm going to get the house and I'm going to make sure everything is fitting correctly. And then I will go in and do the finer details, doing the colors and everything else. So this is the point in the video where I want to introduce you guys to Barbie and Suzanne. 
And let me preface that by saying this group chat is lit all day, all night. My phone is dinging. These ladies are cracking up in this group chat at all hours. And it's like, it's so nice. It's a breath of fresh air getting to meet new people and making new friends that are seriously just hilarious and they just get to bring like something new to your life especially with this collab because we have all had so much fun talking about these themes and kind of coming together to to talk about the struggles of nail art and content and you know trying to put out youtube videos it's like we are all one and the same and it just it really feels good to meet other people like yourself so first i want to get into barbie and barbie is the type of person that would throw herself under the bus for the group right if it means that it's saving the group she would do that and she is the type that will make fun of herself to make others feel better and people like this must be protected. She is too cute with her jokes, talking about how she is Chunker Bell and talking about like she she will put out scenarios and just it, clown all day long. It's so funny and she is just really too cute and hilarious. You guys definitely need to go to her channel. Her nail art is definitely reminiscent of her. You can see where she tr tries lots of different styles and techniques, tries different things. She does medium to short nails and when I say her nail art for those lengths are spectacular, I like seeing people try different stuff, try new things. So I definitely appreciate that. And you guys should definitely go check her out. And like I said, I'm leaving all the ladies links down below, but Barbie and Suzanne's will be at the top of that link list. So you guys can go and check them out. And I am going to add them in the title of this video. So it's very easy for you just to click on the title, click their name, and you can go straight to their channel. So now we're going to get into Suzanne, which is girly nail six, six. And Suzanne is like, seriously, this sweet woman. She is so kind, caring, loving, supportive. She is like there to root you on. She enjoys rooting her friends on. And she is just one of those people that seriously have an honest to goodness, amazing heart. She does stamping, which I didn't realize how cool of details you could get with stamping plates, but look at the designs that she does. She goes in and colors in the designs and she does natural nail manis and like all the designs that she can get in on a natural length nail is seriously like mind blowing. Like it's my, it, it's blowing my mind. I, I can't believe how much art she can get and how intricate these details are for natural nail lengths. It's so cool. I love stamping and because of her, I think I'm going to go and invest in some stamping plates and see what I can use them for. Yeah, definitely go check her out. Her channel here on YouTube is really cool. You guys are going to love her. Her link will be down in the description box. Also, please, please, please go check these ladies out. It is definitely worth your time. So we're finishing up the sketch, sketching in the tombstones and the bats and stuff. And I just want to point out the fact that I did the ground that Courage is on, but then I also did a background, if that makes sense. And that is the skyline. And the skyline is where the sun touches the earth last. It's off in the distance is what it's supposed to look like. So the ground that is up close that Courage is standing on and the big tombstone is on, that is black. But that background, the skyline, where the sun is going to touch the earth last before it finally goes down, that earth, I wanted to throw in some extra tombstones because I didn't feel like there was enough. And that earth, I'm just going to do like this light, the, this black purple color. You're going to see me get to it. But I wanted to point that out because I wanted it to be a little bit more dimensional. It really felt one dimensional. It felt like there wasn't enough going on as far as the graveyard went and I wanted there to be like this background graveyard if that makes sense so I'm going in with beetles neon gel polishes I'm using the pink and the purple if you look these up on Amazon look up beetles neon gel polish and you're gonna find this 
pack of six, right? It comes with blue, yellow, green, orange, purple, pink. Um, it's a really decent price and they're 15 milliliter bottles. So I'm going in with the purple and the pink and I'm just doing pink towards the ground and purple towards my cuticle. And then I'm going to use a long liner brush and I'm just going to swipe through where these two colors meet to blend them together. Now, if you want it to be an actual neon pink and purple, you would have to do this over a white background, but I didn't want them to be neon. I didn't want that. I wanted them to be just a brighter purple and pink so that it would look like a skyline, if that makes sense. And then here we're just going in with our liner brush and just doing a slight blend and we're gonna cure and go in with a second coat. Now, the particulars about this second coat is that I'm not gonna focus the the polish on the sides of the nail. I don't wanna bulk out the sides. That's one reason why I didn't do white polish first to make it neon was because I would do three coats pretty much and that would ruin the shape of the nails. But for two, this second coat of blending, I wanted to concentrate it more on the top of the nail so that I'm not bulking out those sides. So in order to concentrate it on the top of the nail, when I go in with the pink, I use the liner brush on this second coat of pink and purple. I use purple from the polish bottle at the cuticle area, but then I use my liner brush with the pink and I actually go in around all of the house, the moon, the bats, the courage of the cowardly dog um i actually go in around all of that and create this little pop of color just that one little layer actually brings in the pop of color that i wanted so okay now that you know what's going on with the art i want to talk to you about some weird facts about cats right Cats sweat through their paws, and then the reason that cats always land on their feet is because they tuck themselves in like an umbrella, and this is called the cat's riding reflex, where because they tuck their body in like an umbrella, like a U-shape, it always creates this feet-first effect, and yeah, that's how cats always fall on their feet. Did you know that a group of cats is called a clouder? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so I mix some purple in with a little bit of black, and I'm just going up near the cuticle area to create this darker look at the top, and I kind of go in around a couple of things to create a shadowed effect in like a silhouette, if you, if you will. A silhouette. We're getting classy with this. This nail art really, really did me in. I swear to God. We're going in and we're filling in uh, Courage with a light pink. And that's pretty much what we're going to do. I forgot his, um, I forgot his cavity. Oh, wait, did you know? Cats do not have a sweet tooth. If you feed them sweet things, they cannot taste the sweetness. Yeah, sorry. Cats don't have a sweet tooth, um, unlike dogs. Oh, wait, did you know that cats can drink seawater? Salt water? Uh, their kidneys are efficient enough, which, which if you didn't know, if you're, if you're stranded on a desert island, never drink the water. Seawater is unable to be filtered by human kidneys. It will kill you faster. You will become super dehydrated. But cats, on the other hand, they can handle it. So here we're just going in and filling in his teeth with a light yellow, and then we're going to go in and shade the moon. I did the moon white, and that is way too white for the moon. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of black, and you're going to see me. I outline the moon with a little bit of black, and I end up taking my finger because I didn't feel like playing with it. I take my finger and just bat at it a little bit, and that creates the shaded, shaded shadowed look that I'm going for. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try it. I, I make a couple of attempts of attempts. Sorry, I talk really fast when I get nervous and I am um, getting ready to head into work. So I make a couple of attempts at um, the Pet Cemetery logo and I fail. So when I fail at something, I don't give up. I just I get when I get frustrated, I take my time and focus it elsewhere. So I'm going to go fill in the gravestones and do a couple other details. And then I'm going to try to come back to that pet cemetery, um, sign. I don't know what you would want to call it. Yeah. Um, here we're going in and that skyline background, 
I am painting that. I mixed that purple and that black together to create the darkness above near the cuticles. So I'm using that same color to fill in the background of uh, the graveyard. So I wanted that graveyard to look more dimensional. And how I did that was um, the ground that Courage is standing on is black. But then it goes off into the distance with another different um, skyline. And that I painted with that dark purple black mixture that I made. And we're just going to go in add a couple details. I don't know if you noticed this in the picture. But there is a hand sticking up out of the ground. And yeah. And here is me just batting at that black to create that shaded look. And then I... I ended up erasing Pet Cemetery a couple of times. You guys, stick with me. We're almost to the hinge, okay? To so that door hinge. I know that I'm getting crazy with this, but the video is, like, coming to a close, and I want to get to this hinge. So, um, I realized that where I was going wrong with Pet Cemetery was I was writing it too big, and I was getting too particular. So, I go in with a dark purple, kind of. And then I go in with a light, light purple and I outline it so that it looks like a fluorescent neon sign, kind of. It gives off that uh, once you matte top coat it, it won't do this unless you matte top coat it. If it's a shiny top coat, it's not going to look super neon. But with the matte top coat, it, it creates this neon sign look, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Now... We're getting ready for the hinge, and I just want you guys to know that I it almost broke me. Here is where we're just matte top coating. All of the nails were coming to a close on this design, and I want to matte top coat my thumb before I start in on this uh, tombstone because I don't want to have to top coat around it. It took me forever, no lie, forever to figure out which part I was supposed to put the top of the tombstone on because the hinge only closes one way if you try to bend it the other way it won't close so I, I kept getting confused I kept having to like take it and stick it on my finger and like think about think very hard I almost busted a blood vessel trying to think of like which way I was supposed to put the tombstone on it it was confusing um, I don't recommend this for anybody, but it was super fun and super cute. Even though the tombstone didn't really close all the way, uh, I think that I should have honestly taken one side of the hinge and um, buried it in the, the sculpture sculpting of the nail and then the part that was sticking out do the tombstone on so then it would have actually closed. But hey, we're here. So I just took a little bit of our clear poison putty and I built the one side. I put it on the the form and I built it, smushed it out, cured it, and then put the other hinge that wasn't used yet onto my nail bed with some more poison putty. And I just kind of, you know, buried it in that poison putty on top of my nail. And hey, we have a tombstone. <laughs> it's not it's not politically correct, but it's there and we got her done. Um and yeah, so listen, uh the kids' dad was in here. He decided to come in and put up shelves while I was doing this. And if you notice I flipped the video footage around so that this would make sense while I was doing it. Um it didn't really look right showing it to you from the other angle. So I'm just showing it to you from head on. I flipped the footage around. Um, but he's putting up shelves and he's doing it literally like over top of my head. So like I am crouched onto my desk trying to finish this before work. And <laughs> he kept knocking into my camera and like I wouldn't notice it because my camera's on like this swivel tripod. And like he'd be like, hey, you're not even filming. And I look up and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it was so horrible. It was like the worst experience ever when it comes to like, and this was the, the awaited for scene, right? This hinge and I'm missing half of the shots for it, but you're seeing pretty much the, the way that I created it, right? I just used gel to build the tombstone on top of one side of the hinge, cure that build the other side on top of the nail, cure that, and then I go in with some white, and I cure the white, 
and then I use black to kind of shade around and make it look like that grayish rock color if that makes sense and yeah we're gonna go in we're gonna draw our little skeleton kitty which I my phone died at this point in time so I had no inspiration to look at so I'm like how how do I draw a cat I'm running out of time I'm going to work um my phone died I have no inspiration to look at so I'm like let me just draw the outline of a cat. And this is part of where like the camera got knocked. You were not supposed to see my vape. <laughs> but I draw the outline of a cat and then I just start drawing like white details like bones or whatever. It worked. You got the you got the picture, right? Okay. So we're at the end of the video. I love you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about the little hinge. I'm going to use it again, but in the next video, I'm going to use it on, um, like, burying it in the nail. So here we go, the finished result. All right, you guys, make sure that you guys go check out the other lovely ladies, Barbie and Suzanne. They are amazing. You're going to love them, and I can't wait to see what they do for their sets. And I love you. I'll see you in the next one. This upcoming Saturday will be a new theme we will all be posting. All right, I will see you in the next one. Bye!